Uh, my name is Brett Shear. I'm the co-founder and COO at Fleek. Uh, we also have some of the team members here on the call. Harrison Hines, our CEO, Janice and Sivaraja, our CTO is on the call, some other people. This talk is called Super Pinning with Fleek Storage. This, it's, uh, the name is after we're a new product we're releasing. Uh, it's called Fleek Storage. And we'll definitely walk through that today. Uh, I'll give you like a demo, kind of like a sneak peek. It's not currently right now public but we'll be very soon. So you'll get a, a kind of sneak peek demo of that um, through this call. I'll also, you know, don't, I'm not gonna skip over like what is Fleek and um, our current product that's out there, the Fleek hosting product that's been um, doing super well and getting a lot of great feedback. Um, so we'll, we'll walk through that as well, even do it in a kind of quick demo format. Um, and then of course, talk about the details of how we do it, of how, of how we're pinning. Um, get into the, the details behind the scenes. So I'll just kind of hop in. Uh, what is Fleek? We, so Fleek, we are a modern web development tool um, for apps and sites that are building on top of IPFS. Uh, so a, a lot of the projects here speaking today are supporting and building with the IPFS ecosystem. Uh, we take a lot of pride in making the user experience very seamless for developers to enter the space as well as current projects and apps that are building on IPFS to have a tool uh, to make that experience really great. Uh, so what that includes is the first thing we launched was the Fleek hosting product. Uh, and we continue to add on it with our, our releases going forward. Uh, but you can kind of see over here in this quick GIF, uh, which I'll give you more a better dive in. Uh, but it's, it has a, a kind of seamless um, integration to any Git provider you have, uh, GitHub to start. And then from there is like a CI CD pipeline to connect your Git provider, deploy, um, and host that will deploy and host that site on IPFS. We have a CDN built into it. Any future deployments or future commits to that Git provider will trigger uh, deployments from there automatically. And then DNS management as well um, so kind of this whole just feature set that's very with the trend of kind of jam stack static websites and giving that super seamless nice experience for uh, developers today to deploy to deploy their app on on ipfs so i'll, I'll give a, a walkthrough on that for sure um, and then the other thing which we're really excited about that i wanted to highlight we just released last week is ENS domains support. Uh, so this is something that, you know, with in the IPFS community, there's definitely a lot of Ethereum users or Web3, just blockchain, blockchains in general that go very well with IPFS. Um, so because of that, we've gotten, it's been a really high request of ours uh, to add support for ENS directly. Um, so that that's something we released, we're excited about. Um, and, yeah, so that's not the only like domain you can just you can do regular DNS management um, like a subdomain or a root domain, uh, but and also DNS link as well we support, and most recently ENS, and then we, we're definitely planning on making a, a very seamless experience for IPNS as well. Um, so from there, I'll just um, hop over to kind of just show off that in action. Let's see. You're still seeing my screen, right? Yep, no problem. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this is the Fleek app um, right here. This is the, the sites page where a, any developer, once you sign up, it's really, this is, this is a list of sites that I've already deployed, um, but it's a very seamless experience of just, once you, to add a site, you connect GitHub, Connect your GitHub. Um, from there, select your repo. And then once you select repo, you can input your build settings. So that's really just like, and then click deploy. So it's really just three, it can be very quick three steps to kind of hit that deployment. Um, but then in this step, you know, we what we do is like we read the package JSON and auto detect like what framework you might be using and then fill in those build settings for you. So here's an example of some of them 
uh, you can select from as well, and it'll auto fill those settings. Um, you can customize it as much as you like. It's kind of that blend between like being the quickest, easiest way to deploy, as well as having like the most customizable options where you can like, so here I can change the Docker image to whatever my specific configuration is that I need to deploy or build my site. Um, we have a bunch of Docker images that we've kind of made like defaults, depending on different frameworks you might be using to make it easy, as well as any different node versions you might have in those Docker images. Um, so yeah, that kind of just makes it uh, a smooth experience, but also very customizable. And then deploy. Um, from here, what's happening is that you'll go over to like logs view. And in the logs view, you can you can watch like what's happening is basically we're using a Docker image, we're building the we're cloning the repo using a Docker image to build it, and then take that the, those deployed files, deploy it onto IPFS. Um, we are running nodes as well as using uh, have like additional redundancy um, using service providers, uh, specifically like Temporal, Pinata, or a couple that we use. Um, and then from there, once it's deployed, I'll. So this might take a minute or two to, to kind of hit that deployment step. So I'll just hop over to one I have right here. So what happens is as soon as it's deployed is we will take that, um, we'll take the, the hash from the deployment and map it to auto-generated terminal uh, fleek subdomain. Sorry, I think it might have just refreshed back, but. So then from there, you can just click and preview with your fleet URL. Like this is a site deployed in IPFS. Um, and things we do to make it like very performant and load really quick is we've augmented IPFS with a CDN. Um, we use like Cloudflare as a CDN currently. There's definitely a lot of really exciting um, things we've been thinking about and down the line we want to do to use IPFS itself and Filecoin down the line as a CDN uh, built into the platform. Uh, but currently that makes it so it has like a good, very performing experience right off the bat. And then from there you can add um, like any sort of domains you'd like. Uh, and those are the different options we support. I showed you, I was showing you the ENS before, but you can add like a subdomain. So in this case, like I just add, I added this subdomain, ipfs.ownyourexperiences.com and just go over to your DNS provider put in that record, click verify, and it'll be hooked up to um, your IPFS site. And then here's the ENS section and, you know, kind of the probably the best to, to really see that ENS experience. Um, this gift gives it off pretty well. So I'll go back into present mode. Um, yeah, so with ENS, you can see like it's we've made it like a really seamless experience where um, you just input your ENS domain, click confirm, and then we just ask you if that is in fact this. We show you the registrant address um, for ENS, and if it is in fact yours, you just click confirm, and then it's one transaction, and we take advantage of the the built-in experience that ENS put into smart contracts where you set us as a controller. Um, and as a controller, you give us the, the kind of day-to-day -day operation ability to update the content hash. So we update the IPFS hash for you making transactions um, for future deployments so that, you know, you kind of make one transaction and then from there on, you don't have to worry about it again. And we can update the hash for future deployments to your ENS domain for you. Um, and then at the end of the day, you, you are the registrant on the ENS domain. You can change the controller at any point you want. You still have complete control over ENS as well. So we're definitely happy with the, with how that experience has come out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the full like Fleek um, hosting product and and what's there what's there today. Um, and then what we've been working on. Um, and are excited to kind of show off for the first time, even though it's not like fully public today, uh, is Fleek Storage. So with Fleek Storage, what we've done is we've built an app, um, a, a CLI, and even it's S3 compatible. So with any S3 AWS SDK, you can interact with our storage solution. 
uh, the store, the, I'll, I'll go ahead and walk through the, the app interface and, and kind of give you a demo of that. Um, but pretty much the main things we focused on for that is giving it like a really good UI experience, just kind of how we've, we've gone around, uh, the hosting experience as well. So we've of course included drag and drop of your folders and files, um, kind of watch the loading, see the files come in a browsing UI to be able to dive in through files, through folders and, and files, um, seeing IPFS hashes at the bucket level, uh, at the folder level within the bucket, and even down to the to individual files and being able to verify in the IPFS gateway directly, uh, similar to how we have with the, the deployed sites and the hosting. Um, and what we've done to make sure it's very performant and we've kind of packed it into one solution is we augmented with a CDN. We have file compression and image resizing as well. Uh, so pretty much it's kind of like a one-stop, really easy way with a nice management UI experience uh, to take advantage of your, all of your apps kind of storage needs on IPFS. Uh, so anything like, so it should be a really simple, really easy integration from your application standpoint. And we've talked with a lot of projects while we built it to make sure that's the case uh, to just kind of drop in a URL um, or interact with the SDK and the S3 interface, of course, makes it that very compatible, friendly uh, experience developers are already used to. And then that UI management um, that, that we provide as well. So I think, yeah, this is where I'll, I'll hop in and we'll do demo number two. All right, so yeah, this is the the Fleek storage UI um, where here's like the, this is the kind of, this is within a bucket interface to start off. We have, we have one uh, bucket and we'll give the ability to have multiple, but at this time you can add any number of folders or files directly. Uh, so the flow is pretty much just like upload and you can browse directly in on your machine or uh, you can, you know, kind of drag and drop, I like to show off the drag and drop feature. Uh, and then from there, once you upload, it'll kind of give you this little loading state so you can watch and see through your files. And then that's pretty much it. You, if you do a, a folder or files as well, um, and then you can see right here that we give you like a URL, a bucket, like a storage bucket URL for Fleek. And then we also have on the IPFS gateway as well. So if you like dive into this URL, uh, you can kind of see in like more of a gateway view of your files uh, or directly on IPFS gateway with, with the hash of the bucket. And then as you dive into the folders or the files individually, you can see the hash of each of those as well. Um, and so I'll just kind of pop up in um, the file I just uploaded. And then you can see details about this file in particular, a little preview image, uh, some actions you can take, hash, and of course, being able to view the file directly. Um, we're, we're still wrapping up a little bit of the, uh, on our, our URLs itself and just kind of finalizing that. So this will be out very soon. Um, you know, definitely by the beginning of next week for sure. Uh, so, and we have a, a lot of super exciting um, users that are already giving feedback and, and getting ready to use it. So uh, that's exciting. Okay, I'll hop back over from demo number two. You got, you got a two for one demo. And then, yeah, so I'll, I'll give some, from here, I'll give some more details. Like, you know, this is a, is a pinning summit. Um, let's let's kind of dive into what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, so we are using a combination of different services as well as hosting things ourselves. Um, you know, we do host it ourselves, but like, so for instance, one of the main things we do is for the buckets that we create, uh, we use textile threads and we put all of the metadata in relation to that bucket in textile threads uh, so that the, the bucket data itself, the bucket metadata about the bucket itself is also an IPFS. Then any CRUD actions, so any upload, creation, 
um, further deleting, et cetera, is through the, like an S3 interface. So we um, are using like S3 and Minio behind the scenes to, uh, and the API interface to our app to call those commands. And um, we run temporal X nodes behind the scenes. And also, and so basically once we call those, um, once we use a, call those APIs, we have handlers that will uh, take that operation, whether it's a create, so, and basically make, create the, upload the file onto IPFS, take the hash from IPFS, and then publish the DNS uh, with that, to that IPFS hash. And then that, that's how we map it onto the gateway itself. There's definitely some intricacies that we've had to work through in that process with the handlers that are, are quite complicated. Uh, so for instance, like if you look at the S3 interface itself, like, uh, and, and how it interacts and syncs with IPFS. It's not really like a direct match. There isn't really a concept of like folders or buckets in that case. So it's something we've had to um, kind of create ourselves and uh, and create that sync and understanding that's how we, like, we've been able to actually like create and sync up like a, bu a hash for the bucket itself, a hash for the files um, in relation to the to the bucket data. And then once it's hooked up and published the DNS, our you know storage.fleet.co, we have our CDN. So we use Cloudflare currently, um, where that is giving us like the, the service of uh, being all around the edge and being able to cache and deliver these files in the most performant way possible. Uh, and then it the comes with compression features as well as we we. Uh, have image resizing features in there as well uh, and then on top of all of that you know with our once we once our handlers basically take the uploaded files and put it in this in this pin queue we also have uh, this pin queue that replicates everything to other service providers for additional redundancy so that's where like we we work closely with like temporal and pinata to to create additional, like to give that redundancy and make sure that those files stay stored in IPFS. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a bit of the, of the details. Uh, that's, I probably could have jumped to the slide while I talked to that. Uh, that's pretty much exactly what they're saying. And if there's more questions about that and more details, we have our CTO on the, on the call, Janison. So he'll definitely be able to dive in further than I can. Um, but yeah, where are we going from here? We definitely have some exciting uh, upcoming sort of changes or upgrades, however you want to say it, um, where we will be using textile buckets, textile buckets or textile even more, um, so that the way we interact with and the way we store data uh, is improved. We're, like, so the, the buckets JS is something we're, we're waiting for to be uh, ready for us so that we can kind of not just put the metadata on threads and with with us running threads nodes right now. We also want to interact with buckets directly. Um, and, you know, it's been great working with, with textile closely to make sure that's going to be working out well. Um, and then also the privacy aspect, you know, um, with threads, something I, I hadn't mentioned is they have an amazing encryption service built in. So anything that we, we use on threads is automatically encrypted. And that's something that we definitely want to take advantage with, take advantage of with files um, using the buckets.js interface and using their, their, and the private buckets aspect. Um, and then of course, down the, in the, in the roadmap is that the Filecoin storage, um, interacting with Filecoin itself and being able to accept payments. It's definitely something we've just accepting payments and, Cryptocurrencies as well is, is definitely something we want to support. Uh, it's very aligned with our ENS support. And we've had, you know, we do have pro plans right now and you can upgrade and pay with credit card. Uh, so, I mean, it's a very smooth process, but also we've had requests for with um, cryptocurrency, you know, mostly Ether at this point, but like, and so we'll continue to definitely support that. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, the whole hosting rundown, um, the, the storage app, I try to give like a whole, a whole breakdown of everything we've done so far, give you some, some live action through the demos. Um, 
and yeah, we, we're really excited about the storage release. Definitely stay stay uh, tuned for that. We'll be announcing it very soon on Twitter and and, and to uh, our current users so they can take advantage of it. Uh, it'll just go directly into the the current app right now. Um, and we're really thankful to have the opportunity to present and talk and be a part of the IPFS community and work with everyone here. Um, so. Yeah, you can contact us or our fleet, our fleet Twitter, our uh, email. We are super um, responsive. We have a Slack community. Uh, there's an intercom in the um, in the app directly on the homepage as well, and we even have a discourse for FAQ. So, uh, you know, we really try to make it as easy as possible to get in touch with us and ask any questions. We definitely take uh, support very, you know very seriously. So we're there. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. We have Janice in here as well. So if, I didn't really dive in too deep to the CLI and the SDK. If that's, if you have questions about that, it would have been awesome to do an even third demo and, and run through <laughs> that. Uh, yeah. To run through like how to get it set up in your app and do an integration. We could turn this into an onboarding session even, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Perfect. So if you have questions about that, you can answer them as well. Just as Mike and EG were suggesting, more more onboarding and more getting started tips for folks. Looks like we have one question from from Joris. Um, can you deploy Next.js projects as well? Totally, totally. That's one of the frameworks that are like kind of auto detected and already supported. So if you're using Next.js framework, uh, we'll be able to detect that and fill in the build settings for you. Click deploy. If you have like a, if you need an older version of Node um, or any customizations. We have a bunch of different like Docker images in our tech docs that you can you can find. Um, and yeah, or any other custom configuration. You can make your own Docker images as well. Awesome. From Joel, how do you guys do key management? How do, can you control the keys for your bucket? Awesome. Um, yeah, so around key management, um, we're using <clears throat> what's built into MinIO um, and we're using uh, AWS, KMS, and um, ETCD for the policies, um, and then hooking that up to MinIO because they they have that plugin. So that's how we're doing key management, and it's pretty standard. Um, and just answering the questions from Juan on on the chat, um, toughest challenge working with IPFS, I think it's like just getting. Um, data available when you need it as fast as you can just due to the dht nature and the pinning and kind of like it's so decentralized so you kind of have to you know make sure things are pinned where when you want them and available so we do things like pre pre-requesting stuff as things as soon as things are uploaded so that when the user or site or another platform goes to it it's already being kind of you know percolating ac across the network and things like that and like brett said redundant pinning and uh, stuff like that. So that's that's definitely been a challenge and just bridging like all of the web two and web three technology. So um, I think that's kind of in a nutshell, but it's definitely fun. From TB King, um, is there an S3 like high level API available for fleek storage or in your plans? Yeah, definitely. So uh, because we built on uh, Temporal's S3X, which is built on MinIO, um, it naturally comes with the full S3 API uh, built in. So you could use any S3 or MinIO compliant SDK and CLI, including the AWS S3 um, CLI and API uh, to interact with it. But then we also are introducing FleekJS, which is gonna be like, well, there's still IPFS extras that you know S3 doesn't cover as an interface. So um, bridging that gap with our own FleekJS that's gonna kind of build on top of these existing ones. Awesome. Another question in the chat. Um, is there any tooling that would make your lives easier, better as infrastructure providers uh, that folks could, could build to solve all your problems? I, I think just what's kind of out there comes to mind, right, with things like Temporal and Pinata and just kind of, for me, it's like taking that up one level and like being able to see across the globe where are these pins relative to the users and having that kind of visibility on the pins in addition to um, being able to pin them. I think that that's what comes to mind there.